to this session, a live FD session about heart attack, myocardial infarction. We have titled this as Everything You Wanted to Know About Heart Attack. This session will be an interactive session. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Tabit Ahmed, Hi. and we will be discussing about heart attack in India. Particularly, India is increasingly becoming the world capital for diabetes and heart disease, of which heart attack is the most severe form, which leads to a life-threatening situation where a lot of patients who don't get to the hospital in time end up losing their lives. We're going to today discuss about why that is so and why we are having so much heart attack in India and also how we can try and prevent it. Once somebody gets a heart attack, what is the best way to deal with it appropriately so that we can minimize the damage? We're here in the Baptist Hospital, Bangalore Baptist Hospital, in the cardiac catheter laboratory where we do procedures to try and treat, cure heart attack when it happens. Behind us, you can see some screens, and these screens are the screens which acquire images of the angiography test that we do when somebody gets a heart attack. And behind that screen, behind that green screen, you have our cardiac catheterization laboratory in Baptist Hospital, which is a state-of-the-art facility that provides quality care for patients when they arrive with a heart attack. And we will briefly discuss about what happens there, but there will be a separate session about coronary angioplasty and primary angioplasty, as we call it. And in that session, we will discuss in greater detail, but today we will briefly touch upon all aspects of heart attack. I welcome you all, and I thank you for taking your time to join us in this live session. And we will start it off with an introductory discussion about what is heart attack, and Dr. Tabit Ahmed, We'll briefly tell you what a heart attack means and then we will, both Dr. David and I, we will discuss the scenario in India. During this session, you will be able to ask us questions, anything that you have, both in relation to the discussion that's going on and in relation to anything that you might have in your mind as a potential doubt. If you put it in the message, some of our people, some of our technical guys who are sitting in the back, they will be looking at those questions, they will pass those questions to us and we will try our best to answer those questions. In addition, if you have missed out on the live session or if you had any questions after the session, you can put it on the comment box in our web page, the BBH Facebook web page and we will endeavor to answer that as soon as possible. Now over to Dr. Tabit Ahmed who is going to introduce to you what is a heart attack and then we will have a discussion. Hi, thank you sir. So. Heart attack in a common term, also like what we say in medical term is acute coronary syndrome. So the acute coronary syndrome is a word explanatory what is a heart attack. So heart attack is an acute setting in which a patient would come with a sudden onset of chest pain or similar symptom and it is usually because of a occlusion or a blockage of an artery supplying the heart. So there are basically three arteries supplying the heart. Occlusion or any critical blocking of any artery of the heart will present as a heart attack. So the patient could present with a sudden onset of chest pain, sweating, what we will say as diaphoresis, breathing difficulty, or and BP going haywire, uh, and suddenly decompensating. So this is uh, the various forms of heart attacks which the patient can present with as an acute uh, coronary syndrome in which there is an HT elevation MI, non-HT elevation MI, or an unstable angina. Depending on what kind of a heart attack a patient presents with, the we, the urgency of our treatment and the modality of our treatment is determined by the type of the heart attack a patient presents with. So if there is an FT elevation MI, the earlier we intervene, the earlier we uh, treat the culprit or that is the blockage of the artery of the heart, the higher the recovery, the better the chances of the heart to stabilize, the better the heart function in the long term and the better the overall lifestyle of the patient. So we also see a lot of young patients coming with such kind of a heart attack. I would want to discuss with the, about that with sir. So since uh, we've been coming here and we've been treating all these heart attack patients, a significant proportion of them are less than 40 years of age, which is not the same scenario as seen in the uh, European and the Caucasian populations. So India, definitely the pathology is different and uh, there is a, such a higher population of young individuals in the productive life years who come with a heart attack and the subsequent life 
is uh, not so normal because of this kind of a heart attack why do they occur and what can we do to prevent them because prevention is better than cure and uh, further management so sir what do you think this is uh, due to that is very worrying and uh, ever since i came to india about two years ago and i was practicing in the west and in the uk and ever since i came to india one thing is so alarming is that we are seeing younger and younger patients having a heart attack the youngest this hospital has seen is an 18 year old female and therefore no age is exempt from getting heart attack in india this is very worrying because this could lead to a lot of middle-aged people with a condition called heart failure where they will not be productive, they will have a lot of symptoms and the overall life expectancy will be so short and this is going to affect the population as a whole, big healthcare burden as well as problem within families. Why does this happen? Number of reasons. The main thing that India has happened or the, what has happened in the India last 20 years is that we have heavily westernized our society while the westerners have become more healthy in their eating habits and exercise. In India we have become very sedentary, white collar jobs and our diet is fast food, a lot of, lot of cholesterol, a lot of calories. The traditional Indian diet and Indian sweets also contain quite a lot of sugar and India is the capital, world's capital for diabetes. So the combination of bad food, lack of exercise, excess diabetes and in addition number of other factors and one of them is stress levels we see a lot of heart attack in certain professions particularly the IT industry who work various hours particularly for US times and European times and they are so stressed out their systems are so stressed out and there is a high incidence of heart attack as a result of stress there is excess pollution and I am looking into that in a greater detail as to is pollution the main reason for these young people getting heart attack. The problem is that they are getting it, they are coming to us and every hospital is seeing a lot of young people getting heart attack. As Dr. Tabit was saying, the best treatment for that is to prevent it, not to treat it because even when they reach us in good time and if we do the correct treatment, the heart will never get back to the complete normal state. Once you put a stent into that artery, the stent can re-narrow at some point in future there is always a risk of that, there is also a risk of a recurrent heart attack, there is, there is always the chance that the heart attack will damage the heart to some extent. So these things lead to a scarring in the heart and all of this is a concern. So prevention is the best and therefore lifestyle modification is urgent and necessary. Dr. Tavit mentioned to you that the main symptom of heart attack is a chest pain. And often you see in the movies that people hold on to the left side of the chest and fall over. The heart is not in the left side of the chest, it is in the center of the chest. The typical pain of a heart attack is not actually a pain, it is a very strong heavy sensation. A sensation as if a child is sitting on your chest or you are unable to take a breath in and the breath is holding inside the chest and the chest is tied with a vice or a tight, tight rope and tied along and pulled along. That kind of tight sensation in the chest along with profound sweating, some dizziness and a sense of very profound ill-being. You feel as if you're going to die. So that is the kind of sensation that people come in with. That's classical heart attack. Only about 50%, half of the patients get classical symptoms, the others don't. A lot of our patients when they come to ER, David, they say that they thought it was gastric. And in India, almost everybody thinks that their symptoms are gastric because any pain in the body is attributed to gastric problem in India. So often they delay, they delay their need to come to hospital thinking it is gastric and taking some gastric symptoms or Gyapandi or whatever or Jadusil or whatever and then they don't come in time. So please do not ignore symptoms, any symptom around the chest, any discomfort in the chest immediately go to the nearest emergency, get an ECG done, check it is not a heart attack. If it is not, great, but if it is, the sooner you get there, the better. In terms of what we do when you get there, as Dr. Tabit was saying, we first assess you to see what is the severity of the heart attack. Is it a major heart attack where you need to rush into the cardiac catheter lab, where we need to put a wire into your heart and then unblock the blocked artery? Or is this a less severe form of a heart attack which can wait, we can give you medical treatment 
and then do that the subsequent stage of whether you need an NGO test or not. So that is how we triage, we assess you to decide which type of treatment. But whichever treatment, the sooner we do it for you, the better. Time is crucial. So as soon as possible, get yourself to the nearest emergency where you can have the appropriate treatment. In terms of preventing heart attack, there are a number of things you can do. And I'm going to ask Dr. Tabit to go through a series of what are the measures that one can go through as a health promotion thing, because we are very keen to ensure that you don't get the heart attack. And in that process, anything that you do that will prevent a heart attack is better than getting the heart attack and getting treated. So Dr. Tabit is going to go through a list of things that you can do to try and avoid having a heart attack. Would you like to tell the yeah, audience thank about you. it? So as uh, Dr. Saronan has already mentioned, prevention is better than cure. Uh, if I am given a choice, whether to prevent a heart attack or heart, have a heart attack, it's an obvious choice. So how to prevent a heart attack? Uh, there are, we have patients who come with various risk factors. We have youngsters who come uh, with heart attacks. And with, this is the first thing that we have to start off is lifestyle. Lifestyle modification, having a healthy kind of a lifestyle including healthy diet, healthy uh, exercise uh, schedule, um, uh, and also avoiding or minimizing the stress that we are exposed to in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, these things are quite important. And I also see very often young people who don't have any other risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, and they come with a heart attack. And quite often many of them have a history of smoking. Either it is active or passive smoking. Although smoking uh, is, is, is known, it is known and it is established entity that it is an etiology or a causative factor of various diseases including a heart attack, cancer, you count from head to toe the umpteen number of ailments which can be attributed to smoking and still our youngsters still are indulging in this habit. So this is another important thing that we actively need to avoid and actively need to uh, discourage our friends, people around us to avoid. Because in the absence of any other risk factors, we come with uh, youngsters are coming with clogged arteries, heavy thrombus of clots sitting in the arteries. And the only main attributable factor that we see is smoking. So avoid this and also try to discourage others from the same. And regarding exercise and regular uh, lifestyle modification, have a good fibrous diet, diet full of fibers, little load, uh, load or lower amount of carbohydrates, good amount of fibers and uh, complex carbohydrates, um, and also some amount of proteins and any oil or average amounts of oil. This is most important part of the prevention and uh, this thing. Apart from that, if we, have, we do get heart attacks, we do get some people in the absence of uh, risk factors, in the absence of uh, any, uh, and have also having healthy lifestyle, but then those are a rare entity in which we do have to treat. When it comes with a heart attack, we have to treat what needs to be done, has to be done. But prevention is the first thing that we need to work upon. Back to you, sir. Yeah. The main thing that I always say to everyone is that uh, South Indian male smoking is asking for trouble. It is the most unwise way of spending your money. You will get a heart attack. It's about when rather than whether. You are going to get a heart attack if you're a South Indian male and if you smoke. Because by genetics, South Indian males are at high risk of heart attack anyway. So it's very, very important to ensure that if you're a smoker and watching this, we plead today with you that please stop it. And now is always a better time than ever, okay? Please stop smoking. And that's one thing you can do to decrease your risk of heart attack. If you stop smoking today, exactly two years from today, your, smoke, your risk of heart attack will be the same as a non-smoker. You will still have risk, but it will take two years for you to get back to the normal level. So stop smoking. Diet-wise, a lot of people ask me which oil is best. The best oil is no oil. Okay, so the lower the oil you use, the better, whichever oil. Do not deep fry your food. Don't go for puri, bhaji, vada. Anything that's stir fried is okay. Any vegetable oil is okay. Olive oil is supposed to be very good. Canola oil is supposed to be good. Number of rapeseed oil, number of vegetable based oils is good. Coconut oil, ghee, they are very bad. Coconut oil is full of saturated fat. Ghee is full of saturated fat. So a lot of saturated fat is bad for your heart because it converts it to cholesterol, deposits into the arteries. So that's second. 
exercise and people think that exercise is something very exotic and you have to join a gym and you have to have a special trainer and it's only for people who have money absolutely ridiculous 45 minutes of brisk walking is the best exercise all of you can do it and everybody should do that minimum three kilometers a day 45 minutes of brisk exercise good diet brisk exercise avoid unhealthy habits these will protect you from a major heart attack if you do get a heart attack then or unfortunate to have the heart attack get to the hospital as quickly as possible because the sooner we intervene the sooner we see you we can do something to prevent that from damaging your heart and that's so so important dr tabit is going to briefly tell you about the primary pci procedure briefly what it entails how much it might cost and how important it is for you to be aware that should there be a situation unfortunate situation that you or one of your relatives is faced with a heart attack what you can do and how we at baptist hospital will be able to help you can thank you tell you, the audience a little bit about primary pci thank you Samit. so primary pci when the word it is primary pci primary is an emergency kind of a situation and pci is percutaneous coronary intervention so in this what this is what is indicated when a person comes with a major heart attack this is what i was alluding to earlier whether it is a ht elevation mi or a non ht elevation mi so as i was telling it's a major heart attack we don't have time we need to intervene the earlier the better so the this primary pci the inter, the intent of this of procedure is to open up the clogged artery which is the culprit which is causing the heart attack so like all re roads lead to rome that's uh, a saying all arteries lead to the heart so we either access the artery in your hand in the hand or the artery in the leg and we uh, go close to the heart we assess the arteries of the heart how the anatomy of the arteries of the heart are which block is there any blocks or how many blocks are there and which block is the culprit causing the heart attack that is called as an angiogram so in after this angiogram we, we identify the culprit which is causing the heart attack and through another catheter which is wired from either the, the radial artery in the hand or the femoral artery in the leg we cannulate the artery of the heart which is causing the heart attack we cross with a wire to, along the artery with either a balloon support or without any balloon and then we open up the bl block either with a balloon or aspirate or try to aspirate the clot which is causing the heart attack and if there is a residual significant blockage which may be 70% and above then try to open up the blockage with a balloon with a stent and try to establish the flow to the extent possible with adequate blood thinning injections and medicines on board with added support whether we need an anesthetist if there is a, the person is having increasing and increasing breathing difficulty and if the bp uh, is a little unstable support for that as well try to try to tide over the patient from this immediate crisis with uh, blood flow re established to the heart muscle which was uh, denied the blood flow because of the heart attack and try to recover the patient following the catheterization lab uh, procedure in the ccu or the cardiac care unit the cost uh, uh, regarding the cost of the procedure uh, it varies uh, but it's an emergency procedure on an average what we would say is including the procedure and plus or minus a stent plus or minus support devices on an average the cost would be somewhere between 1.5 to 2 lakhs that is the bare minimum you are looking at in terms of the cost wise and in terms of the procedure as dr tabit was saying in a very simple way the artery is clogged with blood clot and cholesterol we need to open it up as soon as we can and the way we open it up is a mechanical method of opening it up we put a catheter into the artery suck the clot out squash the cholesterol put a metal tube called stent re-establish blood flow mm -hmm. the sooner we re-establish blood flow the minimum the damage so therefore it is extremely important and it has to be done as soon as possible 15 to 20 percent of people who have a heart attack do not make it and within 24 to 48 hours this happens so the sooner you get to the hospital we can a save the life b save the heart and c provide a better quality of life for you for future with a good medical treatment as well as an intervention treatment yes it does cost a lot of money but 
once this catastrophe happens, the best treatment is opening up the artery as quickly as possible. And we at Baptist Hospital, which is what you're seeing behind there, another procedure going on, we at Baptist Hospital have all the expertise and the technical facility to help you in your time of need. I have a few questions from the audience and I'm just going to go through them when we get more. There is one from Dr. Um, there's, there's one from uh, Mrs. Amuta Melvin and she says, does it help to keep an aspirin tablet under the tongue as an emergency help? Do you want to answer that Dr. Tabit? See, aspirin is the first treatment, blood thinning is the first treatment that needs to be done because the heart attack is because uh, caused by a blocking of an artery of the heart. So this is what we do. The earlier the aspirin is delivered, the better it is. Uh, once the patient comes to our emergency room with a heart attack, the first thing that our doctors do after identifying that it's a heart attack is giving the aspirin. So taking uh, the adequate dose of aspirin, which would be 325 milligram of aspirin when a heart attack is diagnosed, is the best form of treatment. Now the question is, you have a chest pain and you have a symptom at heart. Do you have a heart attack? Is it gastritis or what is it? So one way is the earliest you seek medical attention, see what it is first, whether it is a heart attack or whether it is something else. Uh, to the nearest local physician, no, nearest doctor, identify that and take the appropriate treatment as well as the aspirin will be the best way. So in short, it may be useful, but you need to know that you are definitely having a heart attack, not a gastritis because it will make the gastritis worse. So that is the only thing that, that is that's a caveat there. The next question from Hero Sam is, does palpitation lead to heart attack? No, it does not. They are two different departments. I always say that one is electrics, the other is plumbing. Palpitation happens. Sometimes the heart attack can lead to palpitations. That's different. But palpitation never causes a heart attack. Palpitation often is due to electrical disturbance in the heart. So I often tell patients that I am either a plumber or an electrician on the given day. I am not often both. So there are two different things. The wiring of the heart is different from the plumbing of the heart. We're talking about heart attack, which is blood flow to the heart. Palpitation is electrical wiring problems. And there are a number of reasons why somebody may get the palpitation. We will discuss it in another, another meeting where we will talk only about palpitations. This is going to be a series and I have envisaged and we have decided that we will do this on a regular basis so that we can we can educate the public as such generally to try and pro uh, progress on the promotional aspect of health. But if you do have symptoms, you can at least know who to go to so that you can get an appropriate treatment at time of need. The next question is, do you want to read that question, Dr. Tabit, and answer that? That question oh. is... Uh, you, actually. Is it? Okay, I mentioned yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Samuel Ponaya. Hi. Hi. We met some time back. So my wife, Mrs. Susie, is your patient, Mr. Ahmed. Yo, thank you. This is a question. No, I think I think he's just uh, acknowledging. Thank you, thank you for and, being and, on and Facebook. Acknowledging, uh, Facebook acknowledging, and acknowledging, that, yes. and uh, uh, I really appreciate your uh, presence and timely logging in and trying to attend this. And I would also appre I would appreciate the next time we uh, have a similar session, you try to involve other friends around you so that others also know and others also take the advantage of this information that we provide and the uh, health services that we uh, provide the other, so that uh, people around you also know more about it. Thank you, Mr. Samuel. Thank uh, you. I completely agree with Dr. Tabit. Please feel free to pass on this information, the links to all your friends and family and put it on your WhatsApp or whatever so that the wider the network, the more information they gather and we benefit from giving them that information and I hope it will be useful. There's another, I just mentioned yeah, his name. Mr. Dipankar Adya, thank you. And uh, he says, greetings to Dr. Saran and Dr. Tabit and thank you and uh, we really appreciate your uh, interest. Thank you. Yes, uh, Amrin Nabila Sharif says coconut oil and ghee are considered best fat for cooking by most nutritionists. Surprised to the change of opinion here. And no, I'm afraid that is incorrect. And there was a significant discussion from a WHO official saying coconut oil is pure poison. And then uh, there was lots of people. I, I don't think any properly qualified nutritionist ever said. And I can't. I, I, I'm, if, if you think I'm wrong, please bring the reference. No nutrition qualified nutritionist ever said you should cook anything in ghee. Cooking in ghee is wrong, it's, un, it's wrong for your heart, it is not the right thing for your heart, it's full of cholesterol, it causes heart attack and it is a very wrong Indian concept thinking that should the ghee because it's coming from cow is going to be very pure and therefore it's good for your health. There is some religious 
I think against in, in favor of it as well that the ghee is used in various religious uh, kind of ceremonial thing. As a result, the ghee is given a very important place in our daily society. But unfortunately, it is definitely not good for your health. Coconut oil, I did my PhD work on fish oil and coconut oil, and I can give you with absolute authority, coconut oil is very bad for your heart. Next question is coming from Nagesh B. Gowda. You want me to read for you? Yeah, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Nagesh, for coming online. Uh, the question is, I am 37 years. Sometimes sudden chest uh, gets tightness. I will take Nexpro 40 tablet. Will that be fine? Uh, shall I? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as you saw the expression on Dr. Sarvanan's face. So sometimes if you get chest tightness and you uh, take next row, one is self-medication for symptoms that you have, which are a close mimic of either it is heart or gastritis. The best thing is, fine, you've taken next row so far, you've been feeling okay probably over it, which uh, why, probably why you're not taking uh, medical attention. But the best thing right now is to seek a medical attention, meet a cardiologist, or if not possible, meet a physician who is closest to you, who is easily approachable to you, give, do a medical assessment of what this problem is. Yes, you are 37 years of age, uh, you might be thinking that I am too young to be having something, it just may be gastritis, but that's what we've been discussing from the beginning of this program, that we are seeing youngsters coming with a heart attack. So, I am not trying to scare you, but and the, it is being cautious about your own health. I would rather have you seek medical attention, evaluate what this is, maybe do an ECG, maybe do an echocardiogram, maybe even do a treadmill test, walking on a treadmill. Even if it is normal, at least you know how much you can exercise, what is your exercise tolerance. So, I think that uh, kind of an evaluation will be needed. And if it is not, and if it is only gastritis, then maybe Nexpro would help. And if not, Nexpro is not helping, we will can have further medical attention. But try to consider and rule out uh, that you don't have any heart problem. That's a very important question, Nagesh, because a lot of our patients tend to think that this is uh, gastritis and ignore their early symptoms of a potential heart attack. And as Dr. Tabit was saying, we're not here to do any scaremongering. We are here to educate you and, and make sure that you're leading a healthy life. But it is very important to check it out. Many times, we, after seeing you and doing all the tests, will not be able to tell you exactly which is what until we do the coronary angiogram. And therefore, it is not wise to ignore symptoms. And therefore, I would, great, I would definitely recommend that you get it tested by a minimum, bare minimum ECG and a treadmill test and then check it out. Great. With that question, we will close this evening's session. Anything else that you guys want to talk about, discuss, please feel free to put it on. And I will write with Dr. Tabit and I. We will. Okay. Two more questions are there, right? Okay, let's take those two more questions and then we will wind up this session. In between, if you guys want to ask any more, please feel free. So, uh, until the question comes, Dr. Sarman, sir. There is a concept, there is a, there is a thinking among the population, public, that uh, uh, there is some amount of, is it uh, such a costly procedure? And there is a there is a perception that uh, it, uh, people are uh, being undergoing angiogram and angioplasty. Maybe it was it indicated, was it not indicated? So, what is your take on well, that? Well, the biggest problem in the Indian uh, medical scenario now is is it's a two-way process. Uh, the trust between the doctor and the patient seems to have been greatly affected in the last two decades, and this is uh, a two-way process, and it is like any other relationship. For this to work very well, there has to be mutual trust. And, uh, and unfortunately, the medical profession, to some extent, has earned it by doing a lot of dodgy things. But most, and most doctors that I have come across, most cardiologists and most doctors that I have come across are genuine. They genuinely care for the welfare of their patients. Many times, we are bad in communications. We fail to express and explain in detail to the patients why they need what they need and why it is indicated and how we are going to be doing it and why we, we just say, oh, you have to have this, you need to pay two lakhs. And that often gives an impression that we are money-minded, which is not necessarily true. And one of the one of the major thing, focus of our practice in Baptist Hospital is to give you all the information, as much as you need, and then let you go home, think, plan, discuss with various people, take second, third opinion if you want, and come back to us if you have that faith. And once you have established that faith, it is so much important for both of us that you have that faith in us and we have that trust in you and we work together to make you better and also help you get, get better. And in the process, obviously, do what we enjoy doing, uh, which is caring for you.
Yeah. So, uh, a question for you, uh, sir. Uh, I think this patient is yours, Mr. Hemant Singh. Thank you for coming on live. Uh, sir, patient ka legs full raha hai. I'm just directly reading out in Hindi what is means so, so, yeah, yeah, swelling sure, the legs. Yeah, sure. And medicine continue hai, Dr. Sarvan sir. So, this is the question which is probably uh, typed partially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, the question ends over here. Okay, okay. Yeah, no problem. So, leg full raha hai, but leg swelling. Leg swelling could be a number of things. It could be very simple. We call it dependent edema. If you're a little bit over on the weight side, you can get an easy leg swelling. If you're taking some particular tablets for blood pressure, such as um, Silacar or Abilodepin Amalog, these tablets tend to cause a bit of leg swelling. So it's not necessarily always alarming, but it is also an early sign of a condition called heart failure, where your heart has become very weak. And as a result, it's not pumping blood around, and the blood is getting pulled into your legs, and your leg is swelling up. So it's very important if you have leg swelling, आपको लेग फुल रहा तो आपको पैर फुल रहा तो ये इम्पोर्टेंट है कि पहले जांच करना है कि एको करके आप दिल ठीक है कि नहीं और आल्सो जो भी आपका दवाइयां चल रहा है उसको भी रिव्यू करना है आपको किडनी को टेस्ट करना है सो किडनी फेलियर हॉट फेलियर दिस टू थिंग्स कैन कॉस स्वेलिंग इन योर लेग्स सो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू चेक इट आउट इट्स एन इंपॉर्टेंट सिम्टम बट इट मे बी नथिंग एज वेल सो अगेन इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू चेक वॉट इट एज so another question uh, this is my patient mr dipankar adya thank you for this question but i think we can i uh, need to have a discussion on this as well so uh, he is 68 years and uh, heavy body i remember you your heavy body weight is 104 kilos mm -hmm. so whether brisk walking is advised or if yes for how long yes uh, heavy body weight and walking heavily yes with every heavy step that you take every uh, there is a injury or there is a weight that uh, bearing on your knee joint so yes if you have a knee pain if you have if you feel there is some strain on your knees the other exercises are there which are still aerobic exercises including cycling if possible swimming and some amount of walking so you need to have a fair amount of balance in between swimming walking cycling whichever is appropriate for you whichever you feel is less burden on your knees so that you don't get knee pain or other joint pains worsening by, by uh, a heavy walking also wear good shoes which also try to take away the burden of your uh, some spring action some cushioning so any take on that no sure i mean exercise is one of my favorite topics to talk about um uh, running often with very bad if you are too heavy and it can damage your knee particularly if you are not wearing the proper footwear but walking often tends not to be that damaging particularly if you are walking on soft areas such as a park where you have grass and you are walking it usually is okay Swimming is brilliant. Swimming is fantastic. It takes away the the pressure of your knees and ankles, and it's brilliant aerobic exercise. If you can do that, sitting ergometry bicycle, sitting and biking, not really biking on a bike, but biking the sta static static bike, the ergometer, and then doing the biking at home. So initially, if you do these things to try and reduce the weight, and then do more walking and running, that's the best way to address this. Great sir. So uh, Mrs. Uh, Rensin Matthew. So my mom is. And this is the question. Thank you for coming on live. My mom is admitted right now in ICU in uh, our hospital. They say it's acute cerebral infarction after the MRI scan. Is it caused due to a heart condition? Uh, that's a that's a good question. People always confuse heart stroke and brain stroke. They call the heart attack heart stroke. Some people call it a heart stroke. The brain attack that causes paralysis paralysis is a stroke. Heart attack is different. They're two different conditions. We are talking about heart attack today, but yes, the heart condition can lead to a brain stroke. There is one particular heart condition called atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heartbeat. That is a precursor where the heart beats in an irregular fashion. So the blood inside the heart is churned by the heart. A blood clot forms inside the heart. This blood clot goes and blocks the artery to the brain, and then the person gets a stroke. Or a, or a weakness in one side of the body that is a brain stroke yes it can be secondary to a heart condition and yes you will need further test your mom will need further test to find out if that is the reason often they are referred to us and we see them and then we do certain tests called holter monitoring continuous ecg monitors and then find out the cause so uh, mr sandeep bajinder thank you for coming online so he says that his mother had a procedure to remove three blocks Uh, remove blocks three months back in his heart, probably an angioplasty. Mm -hmm. She is now, uh, yeah, she is on Brillinta. That's a blood thinner, aspirin, Concor, and Prozovast. Now she is complaining of pain in the legs. Any advice? 
uh, the rosuvas is a rosuva statin. It's a statin medicine. It can, in a large dose, and if it's given more than 10 milligrams, often it's 20 to 40. In that dosages, it can cause something called myositis. It inflames the muscles. But it may not be just myalgia, muscle pain. If it's just muscle pain, no problem. But if the muscle is getting damaged, inflamed, then we need to reduce the dose or change the tablet. The tablet may be the cause. The best thing to do is a blood test called CK levels. We, if you come and meet us, we will be able to sort that out for you. Mr. Santosh Matthew, hi. Thank you for coming online. Uh, I have done an angioplasty on him primarily. Thank you. So, but I would address the question to you. So, what about red rice, good or bad? And what about food schedule? Okay, good. When the rice is bad, rice is, rice is carbohydrate. Red rice is better because it's got more nutrition. But carbohydrate wise, it is the same. So it's still a sugar. So you have sugar plus a little bit extra vitamin. If you need vitamin, yes, you can eat red, red rice. But you can't say red rice is better than white rice in terms of the sugar content. So when it comes to the heart, red rice is as bad as white rice. And therefore, I, we wouldn't recommend that you eat a lot of red rice thinking it is very healthy. Similarly, a lot of people ask me, is honey great? Is jaggery, not the chakra, is it great? It is not. They are still as bad for, as sugar, except they have extra iron in them. Okay, iron in the jaggery and honey contains a lot of vitamins, natural vitamins. Other than that, sugar content is the same. So, if you are trying to cut down your carbohydrate level, red rice or white rice or any other rice, brown rice, doesn't really matter. Rice is rice. Sugar is sugar, sweet is sweet, honey is sweet, honey is sugar. Therefore, no, it is not necessarily more healthy. So I think it comes down to calorie intake. Absolutely. Like glycemic index. If you have doubt among food items, you have online resources where you can look at glycemic index of individual food items. Try to take low to medium glycemic index food items across all the categories. Vegetarian, dairy products, non-vegetarian foods. Try to see that you have the glycemic index in your mind when you take the food. And uh, you also mentioned about food schedule, when in otherwise diet. A lot of people ask me about diet. And diet, there are so many. In the last session, I talked about diet. Diet is something that is a, is a, is a very important area that a lot of people focus on, but I don't know how many people follow it. For diets to be followed on a long-term basis, it has to be simple, it has to be practical. And in that respect, my recommendation is never a designer diet. So don't go for any paleo diet or a keto diet or any designer diet. Make your own diet based on what you like to eat and choose the ones that are healthier, choose and avoid the ones that are unhealthy. Sugar, carbohydrate, oil content, fat content, try and avoid. Carbo and fibers, vegetables, fruits, very good. Increase these, reduce the sugar, reduce the oil. Don't deep fry your food. Try and grill your food as much as possible. Try and eat boiled food. These are the ways you can do a good diet, balanced good diet. Great. With that, we will, I think, end today's session. And uh, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking time and joining us in this session. And uh, thanks to my colleague, Dr. Tabit. And thank we you. also enjoyed discussing this in, with you. And we will be online on, on live uh, Facebook next time. And when we are, you will get the message. And please do feel free to join us and ask questions. And thank please you. ask others to join us. Well. Thank you. Thank you.